Okay, I've received a couple of questions on how to improve hand speed. And this is not as straightforward of an answer as maybe we would like, and I'll, I'll show you why. I think the best way to do this is through a graph. Sorry to get technical on you. I'll try not to bore the shit out of you. This is basically a force velocity curve. Shows a relationship between force and velocity. That kind of looks something like that. What it says basically is, as we employ our highest levels of force, the velocity is gonna be low. So think about a 400 pound bench press. Ton of force, bar velocity is slow. Or, you know, if we're employing our highest levels of velocity, the force is low. So, table tennis. You know, you hit that ball really, really fast, but there's a low amount of force imparted upon that ball. Um, so if we just spend our time down here working on the velocity aspect and neglect the force aspect, we're not going to have anything behind the punches. You're going to know this because the guy uh, in the gym that has real quick punches, but their opponent walks right through it. All right, if that's the case, they need to spend time on this upper half of the slope. Spending time moving big weights quickly, heavy medicine balls, weighted plyometrics, things like that. And before, you know, you start thinking, oh, all I need to do is just be the fastest guy out there and you know, I can do what I want in the ring. Let me dispel you of that notion. Once your opponent walks in the ring and finds out you can't punch, I don't care if you have the quickest hands in the world, boy, they are going to walk you down. I promise you that. So there has to be something behind that punch. Now, on the other hand, if you got the guy up here who's just working on you know, lifting big weights, they're gonna be real strong, but they're gonna not have that velocity component, and that velocity component will decrease. Um, so it might be the guy in the gym that, you know, you see their punches coming, you put your hands up, and they club you on the side with those big, ponderous, heavy hands that knock you halfway across the room but don't hurt you because there's no force or there's no velocity, there's no pop behind it. And any point along this, we just multiply force times velocity, that's our power. So the big guy with no velocity has a lot of force, a little bit of velocity, not a lot of power. The person down here with the super quick hands but no force behind it, force times velocity, small amount of power. So what we want, high level of velocity, but also a high level of force. So we want to shift this thing, this whole line, up this way. Increasing the amount of force that we can apply to each velocity and increasing the velocity along with it. So what that means, what all this means is the takeaway is you know, unless you're at the extremes, most of us lie in here, we need to exercise this entire continuum. We need to go in and lift the uh, heavy weights quickly. The, you know, weights that are representative of maybe half of our max, even more quickly. Weights that represent maybe 10 or 20% of our max, even more quickly. We need to work this whole thing. Now, when we're working with the weights, the heavier weights, the, the weighted jumps, the weighted jump push-ups. We, the most important thing is the intention to move fast. So if we have a, a bar on our back that represents 50% of our max, uh, our one rep max, we're not, we're not gonna be able to move that bar too fast, but we have to intend to move it fast because what we're trying to do is recruit as much strength as possible in the shortest amount of time possible, and that takes a large level of concentration and motivation. So, if you're down here, get working on those big weights, moving them quickly. If you're up here, work more on your speed, all right? Work on um, uh, assisted plyometrics, light medicine ball throws, full speed shadow boxing, without gloves or wraps, over speed exercises. If you lie in here, work this whole continuum. Work every part about it. Don't just spend all your time in the gym. Now, once you reach a, a 
sufficient level of strength, you're going to want to spend most of your time down here learning to apply that strength. Uh, I mean, if you have a 500 pound squat, moving up to a 600 pound squat, probably not going to do a whole lot for your power. All right? But what we can always improve on is the amount of force that we can recruit for the faster velocities. Make sense? If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Happy to ask them. See you next week.